from the metal mixtape. It's the boy. It's the dog. DJ Rambo. That was Yod with Bloody Wood. It is time. It is time. It is interview time. We have Matt from another anthem on the line. What is up, Matt? Oh, hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, stoked to be here and stoked to talk about Metal Fest. Dude, I am, I am excited, dude. So uh, one of the things I want to start off with is how I got into another anthem in the first place, man. Because as soon as I heard your band, dude, I was addicted. And you know what's in? And I remember my best friend, Rusty, gave me like a, a different, like a huge, like a. Uh, so I was watching you guys the first time I ever saw you guys. And I grew up like on uh jimmy Eat world was like one of my favorite bands growing up right and, yeah. and that whole era and i've watched jimmy Eat world documentaries like that whole era was just huge to me and i remember watching you guys play and i, I was just like up there with a huge smile on my face like <sighs> and, and and my and my friend and my friend rusty was like oh he's like i know why you like them so much and i was like why he's like because you want to be in a band like that <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i was like uh oh, pretty much i was like i was like dude did you guys one of the things that I love, dude, is, you know, what I love about music is when bands write music that people can relate to and enjoy and feel. Because with all, you know, because with, with a lot of the best bands in the world, those are the bands that can trigger your emotions, that can trigger your feelings, that 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 that, that can bring some sort of community within the crowd, something like people can relate to. And with another anthem, I, I immediately thought of you guys of a band that people can relate to emotionally oh that's rad man thank you i yeah we tr we try to be that we try to be that and uh as a as a music fan myself i totally get what you're meaning because it's one thing to just kind of be have that feel that like very inherent you know separation of like okay i'm an audience member that's the band but when you're like brought into the live show and then there's that kind of like kismet between the performer and the audience like that's that's the that's the best stuff and that that's like what makes live performing and you know going to live shows like the best dude absolutely dude so so when when i got into another anthem uh, you guys have been out for a long time i think somebody said you guys have been out for like a decade at least dude. oh do, oh no longer than that uh we started in 2006 so this year is going to be 18 years Dude, so dude, yeah. are you, so so dude, what do you so so I, um in a short description, uh, this is a two uh two prong question. It's when you first started this band, uh, what was your idea behind it as far as like um where uh, where your goals were, and also second, uh, what do you think is important to longevity in any project? Both good questions. So when we first started, uh we were kids so the goal was like oh dude we got we have to get signed right you know and obviously that didn't happen um but it's it's funny we started like pre completely digital age and when we started like when labels were actually paying bands and then now yeah. we've we've lasted to the point where like that doesn't really happen unless you're like Taylor Swift and you know and then you know like the huge hugest acts in the world they make a lot of money everybody else not really um so uh yeah our, like our goals were were very you know very they're they're they were pipe dreams but also I would have never guessed that we would still be doing it and then also like I I don't think we would have my goals were so short-sighted at least in terms of being a quality songwriter as well because mm -hmm. if i would have been able to hear where our songwriting would go that many years later i'd have been like that's not my band like, you know if, if i would have gotten a time machine I'm like that's got to be a different band right a band that's way better than we are <laughs> so um and then in your your second question um longevity i think the reason why we've lasted so long is once it was clear that it was like okay this it's going to be difficult to make this like a, a full-time job because we had peers that like washed out because they tried to like all of us are quitting our jobs and we're going to go on tour and all respect to that but that's tough that's really really tough and a lot of times like if you can't make it happen you've given up everything and that's usually when bands wash out so we over over time we started making our goals a little more realistic 
worrying about the songwriting but the biggest thing is so myself and the bass player logan we are original members we're best friends and what really helped things out was about 10 years ago we got a lineup that is pretty much the same as it is now um our drummer our other guitarist craig and um and we're all best friends and the biggest thing i can say that's for longevity is being in a band of people that you like that you want to play music with and and that's i honestly think what's kept it going because before that we had a number of lineup changes and it was just yeah things not gelling or people that had different um different goals different uh different priorities and so i think the longevity has just been it being fun to be with those guys and playing music and that's what's what's kept it going for sure yeah no um i i can totally see it as well man because i feel like um i can see it in a live performance where sometimes you have a uh, natural chemistry where everybody's generally enjoying themselves on stage and you know you're talking about lineup changes where i'm sure you've dealt with you know, people not having as much fun. And that can sometimes rob the energy or rob the emotion for what you're trying to portray in your songwriting, you know? And, um, but, you know, you're talking about how your songwriting has changed and how maybe the younger self um, maybe wouldn't have thought that this is, like, the band he's playing in now. Like, like where, wh like, emotionally, like, like, where were you at when you were younger to where you are now to where now you're writing this sort of style comparatively to where you started? Yeah, so I th I think um, I think not only just skill set has matured, but also, um, you know, we've all matured as as people. And so I, I think like my my writing was when we first started. I was a teenager so it was like so angsty like overly angsty you know because it's like part of that part of life um and uh and i think that's been more refined but also with just like i said the the musicianship being able to grow i think i could fully realize some of the things i wanted to do when i was younger for instance so i i you know not trying to just like blow smoke because i'm on a metal radio show but so I am like the token hardcore and metal guy in our, in our band. And then uh, our guitarist, Craig, he's really into metal, but when we first started, like I was the heavy guy, but I really love punk rock as well. Um, so when we first started, I loved so many different types of music that I was like, okay, so I want to do like a no effects style, like skate punk band, but then I want to have like breakdowns and like, uh, we actually, when we first started, we had a second singer for a hot minute because I was like, I want to do like Atreyu-esque, like a uh -huh. one dude that screams, one dude that sings. Uh -huh. And we didn't pull that off at all because we sucked. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, so over, the t over time, I was able to like, okay, we can play like super fast melodic punk rock but then throw in and you know like our heavy influences and stuff and and, and be able to kind of meld those worlds because i love hardcore i love metal but i really love the melody and the hooks of like pop punk and punk and so to be able to kind of do those things and i think that's made us um especially for a quote-unquote like punk you know pop punk or punk band i think we're typically more eclectic than a lot of our peers and it's funny we it's i don't really feel all of that out of place playing metal fest because we've played with metal bands a lot because we're usually the weirdo band that's like we're too heavy for punk bands but then we're like the softest band at the metal show which i'm fine with i i i'm fine with being like that weird right in the middle and so i think that's kind of what has changed over the years and um is the ability to kind of fully realize and then the, the other thing would also be i really i've gotten to a point where i i don't care as much about trying to stay in a lane like genre wise so we'll just do you know what we want and sometimes you know it's just kind of it's kind of bizarre and strange or there'll be like that that melding of different styles and i think that's really freeing creatively yeah dude uh, agreed i mean um w when you brought up like a treyu uh, that totally hit sparks with me because i grew up with the treyu you know what i mean I, you're talking about how like uh 
uh, Alex and Brandon, they used to go back and forth. And now Brandon yeah. is just doing vocals for Trey. We're actually playing one of the new songs where it's just Brandon now, uh, who was the drummer, who's now the singer. But you know what? Um, I, I see it in your styles, but I think you guys did it right, dude. You know what I mean? Because because especially with another anthem, uh, I mean, I mean, with uh, South of Heaven, there is a breakdown section in there. And like there's yeah. this weird like there's a, not weird, but there's like uh, like. I feel like you guys did it right where you 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 kept it flowing and it all still works. Cause I feel like when you do mix in a lot of genres, you have to have that flow state that flow state. You know what I mean? Where 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 you're keeping the crowd in a continuous emotion and you're not just putting everybody to a halt and having to ask questions. So I think I think rhythmically sure. that that when you guys went into like a breakdown and also like your solo, I think cause you guys kept it like just in in that rhythmic realm that it was able to work and and, and you were still able to uh branch out to sit performers genres you know what i mean because even like the beginning of the song to where the quarry catches it uh the choruses are and then and then you have like uh the crowd chants and how how just so much melody in it but i feel like the song structure has to be like like it has to be to a t because you could really butcher a song if you don't line things up right you know what I mean? So I think oh, I think sure, that's, sure, I, yeah. I think so I think that's where like your maturity has came in, you know, where, where I see it in your music, you know. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, because uh, it's funny. Sometimes we'll go back uh, to our really old material and the songwriting. I've always kind of liked to experiment with like song structure, but we did it way too much when we were younger. Like there's <laughs> there's not enough structure and it, it's just it, there isn't that like nice flow from kind of mm -hmm. different parts or different sort of like things sonically where you're going from a melodic thing to a heavy thing or whatever it's it's not it doesn't have that smooth flow and so that's but that just takes time and practice and becoming a better musician um but yeah that wasn't always there <laughs> yeah no but hey you know but it's cool that like you you stuck with it long enough to to realize where your your perfections and imperfections were you know what i mean sure. and and i and i feel when you stick it out it's like you you feel like uh more enjoyment off your songwriting once you do figure out little tricks you know what i mean i know i know i know when i talk with my band and we're trying to keep a flow i'm like just imagine rocking your head you know what i mean like like when we yeah. transition and when we go into a section are you still going like this where it like it feels comfortable or you're like at a halt you know what I mean? Because I always tell them, like, yeah. I always say in songwriting, like, let's avoid the halts. Let's avoid that wall. You yeah, I mean? awkward tra transitions. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. awkward transitions where it just, yeah, it has to flow, man. And I feel with your band, it's awesome. And, and yeah, yeah, your band's a little different than uh, some of the bands on Med for Metal Fest. But I always tell people, man, it's 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 called Med for Metal Fest, but we, we, we always bring, every year has had a different sort of band. You know what I mean, I would I would say the biggest band that was kind of oddball oddball that's ever played was the Shaky Harlots. They played. So what's funny? I, I've got a story about that. So okay. two of those people are in another anthem, and yeah, so that's awesome. uh, yeah. yeah, and so so uh, <laughs> our our drummer Andrew uh, he was in Shaky Harlots, and then um, so actually I can talk about this just really briefly aside. Go for it, so go for it. Um, uh, at the end of last year our longtime uh second guitarist craig he needed to take a hiatus for some personal stuff well we can officially announce we put it out on our social media he's back but in the in that time we got a fill-in guy bailey uh arango who was in shaky harlots with with andrew our drummer and andrew would kind of vouch for him like dude this guy's an awesome guitarist so we've been performing with him but uh we just got Craig back and we decided we like playing with both those guys so much that we're doing something really weird we've never done and we're gonna have three guitar players um oh yeah which is which is gnarly and we've we've been uh we've been rehearsing and uh as with that kind of lineup for the metal fest show and getting prepared and it sounded awesome it's like really thick in certain parts when then we're doing like you know third guitars doing just different stuff and it's really really rad but uh yeah so both of those guys that are in our band, they, they, they played your festival before and, you know, vouched for it. And, and, uh, but 
knowing that, and uh, I've known some other bands that were not, uh, you know, full on metal that have played your festival as well. And I love that, that you do that. I think that's really cool because uh, it's, I think what's really sick about the metal scene. And that's why I always actually really enjoyed playing metal shows is when we first started, there was kind of this like tribalism around music mm-hmm. genre. And it kind of bummed me out because like I said, we, me, especially I loved hardcore. I loved metal. I loved punk, but like those worlds didn't, crossover as much and that's changed and i love that it's changed where it's it's almost like it's it's cool and accepted now for you know metalheads like yourself to be like dude i freaking love jimmy world or like you know the pop punk kid to be like oh you know what i really love you know the ghost inside or terror or whatever like and that's that didn't i wasn't always like that and so i think it's cool when music genres um kind of commingle because i think that's just fun for music fans too to like go to a show and then you're getting a little bit of a little bit of this a little bit of that and i you know i know that this lineup there's like brutal death metal to like metalcore to us and like hollow bodies like they've got some metal tinge but they're like in the punk rock rock world and i love that that's just fun to play those kind of shows and it's fun to watch those kind of shows just because it's I don't know. It's like a, it's like a smorgasbord rather than like, all right, we're just going to have one flavor. Well, you know what? You know what? I feel like we're almost getting in a, in a point where like in just society, it's acceptable to like branch out and like different things and not being so judged about it. You know what I mean? And I, I I think maybe it's because information is, is so shared on song on such a wide spectrum now that, that like, you know, that it's just like, like for instance, I'll tell you this, like back, you know, we're, we're similar ages. So back then it was super cool to hate Creed, right? Now, everybody, <laughs> now everybody, I, I, I'll tell you this, man, I, at my work, we have like 30 employees, all 30 of them know the chorus and all 30 <laughs> of them like it. So, you know what I mean? I work at the grocery store and they were playing higher this morning and this lady was walking by singing it loudly, pushing her cart. Oh yeah, let me use that example. <laughs> but but I feel I feel like nowadays, I mean, things would be acceptable. But but the thing is, what you're talking about, how um, it's really cool that the scenes are intermingling. Is that just Southern Oregon is a huge mixture of just awesome bands and awesome genres. Yeah, and I always, you know, one of the things I always try to push with Metro Metal Fest is that it's a community festival, man. Like like bring bring all the rad bands from our community, and and next year we'll have more more different styles of bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every, every year we've had six to eight local bands. You know, this year we have six. Six out of the 14 are all Medford and Grants Pass. You know, and, and what's awesome is that our scene is expanding so much to where I already have like seven to eight local bands booked for next year. That's awesome, you know? man. Yeah, I love you to know? hear that. Yeah, so it's just, it, you know, and, 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 I, and I love to hear that out of you saying like, how cool it is how how everybody in our scene has been like so accepting of of, e- of each other and and they all just want to have fun and listen to music you know like uh i remember like uh when we played a show with you guys it was like insanity's rain it was like uh neon chrome american overdose you know what i mean and another anthem is like four bands completely different from one another yeah and i honestly that show ruled and it was so much fun and everybody had a good time with with each band and I, that's what that's what i'm getting at is like that that kind of stuff is is super cool and i i feel like that that couldn't have happened you know 15 20 years ago and i and i, and I love that it's changed and you know the biggest thing that i always get a kick out of is i always really i like playing with metal bands because i always i always looked at it as a challenge if like hey if we can you know, play some poppy stuff, but then play some heavy stuff and then win this crowd over. Like that's, that's saying something. And, but what I always love a a, a badge of honor is to have the gnarliest, like Hesher metalhead dude come up to you after the show and be like, yo, I, you, I used to love bands like you guys back in the day when I was like 15, I was listening to FX and lag wagon and rancid. And he's like, I haven't listened to that music in a while, but man, like you guys are so sick. I love that stuff. And, you know, and it's, 
it's always like the gnarliest metal dude that's like wearing a Slayer shirt or something. And it, you know, so, and it's, and I think that's one of those things where it's like, Hey, we, you know, I, I loved punk and then I wanted something more extreme. So I got into metal or I loved metal and then I wanted something a little more melodic. So I got into punk and, and those, you hear those stories all the time. And so, and I, and I, so I love that stuff. Dude, you know what, dude, the way I see it is that I'd rather eat at a buffet than one restaurant my whole life, dude. So why not mix every entree, you know? A hundred percent. And I think that the commonality is like, it's all counterculture, underground, aggressive music. And I think that's why like, there's a kinship there where it's like, we like, we want to bang our heads. We want to get in the pit. You know, we want to hear something fast. We want to hear something gnarly. And it's, so uh, it's, uh, to me, it's just, it, it makes sense that it all goes together. Dude, most definitely. I love it. I love it, man. Dude, uh, Matt, super excited to have another anthem play Medford Metal Fest, dude. It's gonna be absolutely sick. We have this is the most RSVPs we've ever had ever, dude. We have people from all four different states coming, people traveling like two to two to three hundred miles just to watch the show, dude. It's 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 gonna be quite the honor. Two stages this year, which we've never done. We yeah. have we have uh fourteen bands putting up like you know because everybody's allowed like their table and everything plus we have like eight vendors uh we have uh all ages uh we even have food catered to kids this year which is super awesome dude it's it's gonna be an experience dude and you know what it's because we have such a rad community in southern oregon dude like you know what like yeah, like definitely. some people can hit some people can hate on medford dude but i've been to a lot of bigger cities and everything and I, I feel I feel pretty safe here. Of course, every town has their downsides, but dude, like we, we have a pretty awesome spot with a lot of awesome bands and and a great community, dude. And and this is like I, I'm just so proud of everybody, dude. And I'm just honored to have you guys play and just destroy it. Well, thanks uh, for including us, man. And thanks for having me on the show, you guys. It's uh, it's been really, really fun. And we can't wait to to play and if y'all are listening to this and you have an rsp rsvp bought tickets you need to do so because it's going to be a banger of a festival uh that lineup is ridiculous it's a murderer's row so <laughs> i like it i like it all right dude uh before we end the interview i'm going to ask you three random questions sounds good i'm sorry you broke up for a second what was that uh, before we end the interview i'm going to ask you three random questions does that sound good of course man all right what genre of music do you listen to that's furthest away from another anthem? That 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 you listen to all the time. That maybe it's an artist that maybe your partner or your friends or people don't know that you sometimes just put on and you just know all the words to. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, I mentioned her earlier. I, Taylor Swift, <laughs> my wife's favorite. She can write a hell of a song. What can oh, I say? Dude, I, I, dude, I'm going to be banned from from the metal mixtape, but no, no. Uh, yeah, probably, no. probably T-Swift. Dude, she's a hell of a songwriter, bro. If you yeah, can't yeah. respect that, like, like, here's the thing. is like all these pop musicians have like a bunch of people that help them. Taylor Swift is at least in the middle of everything, you know, when she's writing all of her music. and And also, here's the thing, too. She's playing like an hour and a half to two hour set. While, while, do, while doing choreographed and then singing on right. top of it and playing an instrument. So how many people can go up there and choreograph, play an instrument, and put it on a performance in front of like a like a hundred thousand people for yeah. two hours? That musicianship in itself is respectable. Oh yeah. No, hundred percent. And and in that and like I said, like you were saying, in that spirit of you know admitting that like Creed is sick, I think it's okay if you if you like T Swift. So, <laughs> hey, I, I'm I'm a huge Sia fan, dude. I I listen to Sia all the time. Um, oh yeah, ridiculous oh, voice. Oh dude, she dude, she's incredible, and she hit her face for a long time because you know she didn't even yeah. start making it big until her early forties. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very talented. Dude, very talented. Okay, dude. For the second question, what is one thing you are terrible at but try to get better at every day? Ooh, terrible at. Um, Spanish. 
<laughs> I like it. Getting on that, getting on that Duolingo. It's uh, yeah, I'm not good at it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still working on it. Do you have one, Josh? Something I try to get better at. Oh no, it's just a, you have a question. Oh, oh, um, no, just ask my usual one. Yeah, go ahead. My usual is just if you, uh, if you were a, a pro wrestler, hypothetically, what would you uh, say your your finishing move would be? Oh my dude, okay. I yes, am a huge I'm a huge wrestling fan, so I love that you asked me a pro wrestling uh question. Okay, can I can I steal an existing one or do I have to like make up no, a, something yeah. new? No, dude. Hey, hey, dude, please. Okay, so I'm I'm six foot six. I'm a pretty tall guy, so I think I'm tall enough to rock a choke slam. And to me, the <laughs> choke slam is the sickest. It's it's just a gnarly, gnarly finishing move. And the like the baddest dudes ever. On it, you know, you Undertaker, Kane. So, oh, yeah. yeah, chokes, choke slam for sure. We gotta, we gotta give it a unique name. We'll call it the Anthem Slam. Ooh, I like that. I like yeah. that. I gotta throw, I gotta throw a little like little sauce on it, so it's not a full on choke slam. Then, so it could be original. But I, I Anthem yeah. Slam, I like that it, a lot. Jim Ross screaming it out now. Just call, it, just call the choke slam South of Heaven. You know, there's uh, there's a wrestler that uh, Baron Corbin has a move called South Heaven. That's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty wild. Um, and so, I don't know. Maybe I need to be tweeting him and be like, "Yo, new theme music. I, I got you a new song, man." <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> I like it, Matt. Thank you so much for taking time. We're going to be uploading this interview on Facebook tomorrow, and it will be on our YouTube, the Metal Mixtape. Thank you so much, dude. I cannot wait. Uh, to have you on Metro Metal Fest, everybody is going to just go absolutely bonkers, dude, because this is just a buffet of just music and just every band that's on here has a lot of energy. A smorgasbord. A smorgasbord, dude. Smorgasbord. But, but before I let you go, can you say this is Matt from Another Anthem and you are listening to the Metal Mixtape? Absolutely, I can Yo, this is Matt from Another Anthem, and you are listening to The Metal Mixtape. Matt, have a beautiful day. I will talk to you later, brother. Thank you, guys. See ya.